Hi guys, PLO Warrior here. Today I'm going to review a PLO tournament I played about four months ago. And we ended up doing pretty well. I can't really remember the exact hand as it was quite a long time ago. But it'll be interesting to review the, the footage. So here goes. Blinds are 1020, so it's the first level. Uh, everyone starts with 5,000 ships, so as you can see, it's very early in the game, probably one of the first few hands. And this guy limps under the gun. Uh, got 71 hands on him, looks pretty fishy, doesn't raise much. Got a double suited hand, not that connected obviously, but we've got the button, so we just tried to isolate him. So he raised and small blind calls, and surely under the gun defends and flop the nuts pretty much. So check from the small blind and check from under the gun. We bet 180 into one into 290. Uh, I think that sizing is fine. And this guy check raises right here. So very early stages in the tournament. Don't have any notes on him. I think generally people are gonna have, they're not just gonna be messing around on this flops out of position from the small blind like in one of the first few hands so if he's not missing around he has either a nine um, forget about pocket jacks really I don't think jacks would raise that often and um, we have a jack in our hand so he either has a nine with an over card maybe ace king nine uh, or he has queen 10 Queen 10 King, you know, Queen 10 8, hands like that with clubs or without clubs. So basically, against all those hands, you know, we're doing well, we've got them all crushed pretty much. The only hand that has a tiny bit of equity would be a nine with a couple of overcards. So I would prefer a raise here, to be honest. Once he's raised me, if, if he's going to raise me there, I don't think he's bluffing. I think, you know, like I said, the hands I think he can have. If I re-raise him, I don't think he's going to fold any of those hands. He's certainly not folding a nine. He won't be folding a wrap, I don't think, to a raise. So, uh, you know, I think it's better to raise straight away. So, I do click it back, basically, and get some more money in the pot. And it'd be interesting to see what he does now. I can't remember what he does. Okay, he flat calls here. I think now that once he flat calls, I think we can rule out the possibility that he has a nine um, with overcards. I think players would just raise here with a nine, with like king nine, ace nine. I think they'd raise here for fear of being outdrawn on the turn if a club comes or a queen or a 10 or an eight. They won't really know where they are. So I think they just like to raise generally with a nine here so once he calls i don't put him on a nine anymore i put him on the queen ten uh i put him on the rappy type hands with or without clubs i'm not sure so he just calls and mm, good card for us well i say good card for us but if i put him on the queen ten with clubs it's not really a good card for us um as you know we have those hands drawing dead anyway However, it's quite hard for us to have a full house at the moment, so that makes it more likely that he'll be calling, I guess. So he checks to us, still putting him on the rappy type hands. I uh, bet 1460 here. I could have bet larger, I think, um, but I don't mind this bet so much. This is gonna be 2200 left behind and there's gonna be 5000 something in the pot, I think. Hmm, okay, so yeah. You know, we bet, and that's probably the best river that we can we could see. It's best, we, we'd never put him on a hand bit of ours. You know, he's most likely to get there with his queen 10 or queen 8 or clubs. Basically, that's the best river card for us to get paid here. And he leads for 920, so straight away I'm thinking block a bet. He either has the straight and he's scared of the flush, 
or he has a low yeah he has a low straight or he has a very weak flush he's scared of the full outs but I think most likely he's rivered the straight and he's scared of the flush I think a flush would probably just jam they shouldn't really but I think he would so anyway he block a bet and so we have an easy raise and he calls us and yep surely enough he had the wrap on the flop but he didn't have clubs with it but he had the hand that I thought he would have so basically we doubled up in the first hand um, and puts us in chip leader position that's pretty nice so next hand this is one of the only few hands that I actually lost that was uh, of some significant size I literally only lost two hands in the whole tournament that were, you know, over over like four big blinds or whatever. So it's quite impressive. So we open here, very standard on the button with the rundown, and we get three bet from this guy here. And don't know anything about him, but initially, you know, I'd say his range is more skewed towards aces, three bet from the small blind. I've got 143 tournament hands on him and he's 3 bet 6%, so he doesn't have to have aces necessarily all the time. I think he has a balanced range here. So I think he's going to have rundowns and aces quite a lot. So we make the flat call. Good flop for us. Um, when he checks here, I think he's either have, he either has aces and he's giving up. <coughs> um, yeah, I think he has aces and he's giving up, or he has he has the low rundown like seven, eight, nine, ten, five, six, seven, eight, and he's giving up also. So we make the bet, and he flat calls, which is quite interesting. So now I've ruled out the seven, eight, nine, ten type hands. Um, yeah, well, he could have weak aces that is not giving up, like maybe aces with clubs, or. A weak flush draw. Turn is the ace, which is an interesting card, and he checks. So we've got two pair. It's no longer top two pair. We've got a gut shot and we've got a ten high flush draw. We check back here. Um, I think I like that. I think I like that. He shouldn't have that many outs against us if he hasn't already got us beat. Uh, so, and five is a relatively safe card. We check back and he had ace king. So we saved money there. That's one of the few pots that we lost. And as you can see, I thought the pot was gonna be bigger than that, but did nothing wrong. Bet when we were ahead, checked when we were behind. Uh, that hand kind of makes sense. He doesn't really wanna bet the flop and get raised, but um, that's fine anyway. Next hand, we have aces. Uh, it gets opened from under the gun. This guy three bets, and we've got 10,000 chips, 10,500 chips, and the blinds are 30, 60. So we've got quite a lot of chips. Uh, I'm hoping I don't three bet. I tend not to three bet really in, in PLO tournaments, just because I try to keep the pots as small as possible pre flop. Because you know, I can now play them, I can now play most of them post flop. So I try to keep the pots smaller pre flop, even if you know I have aces or whatever. It's a post flop game, so yeah. So I like my flat call. And this guy's only got uh, 1700 anyway, in and he three, he three bets, which is nice for us and folds around and this guy flat calls so now we now we can get a lot more money in the in the middle which is good yeah we can get five thousand in the middle so we can get we can get half our stack in the middle which is absolutely fine to do with aces obviously and if this guy folds then you know we don't mind we take it heads up if he calls you know well we're pretty much going with any flop, and that's not the best flop I've seen, but he jams into us, bit of a gross spot. Obviously we can't fold. 
So all the money goes in and the pretty disgusting turn cards and just presume that, you know, I've lost the whole pot. But he turns over kings, which is a terrible play on the flop. And this guy wins obviously the small pot, but we don't care about that. So we ended up profiting from that, even though, you know, once I saw that turn card, I thought, well, you know, I'm out of the tournament. So nice result there. So now we're on 18,000 and the blinds are 51. So mm, we have a decent amount of big blinds. Pretty deep. This guy flat calls, limps under the gun. We min raise. This hand is too strong to be limping on the button. I could raise more, but like I just said, you know, I like to keep the pots small pre flop, outplay them post flop. So they all call, which is, you know, I'm fine. My hand plays, plays fine in four ways. Like I've got two, pretty much two nut suits and some high cards and things. So, so we flopped the gut shot and the nut flush draw. So we have. 13 outs to the nuts pretty much as long as no one's obviously got a higher straight draw, but it's quite unlikely So it's check check and this guy bets like a core of the pot, which is just so weak and It is quite interesting spot here. I have no idea if I raise or call um, I think I just prefer a call to be honest as we're quite deep and stuff. So yeah So I just call and it, it brings these people in as well like you know get more money in the pot when basically a club comes I win so we're getting 200 extra in the pot basically if I raise he'd be folding so and we hit the nuts on the turn lovely guy checks under the gun and checks hoping about 875 here 800 is fine and still got an extra 800 in there this guy folds originally so he obviously had a weak hand and the two hits the, turn, the river. I don't expect to be losing to any full houses here, basically. Unless, no, no, I don't ever expect to be losing here. So I checks, I make the value bet, and he raises, which is pretty gross. Um, I think I have to call anyway. The only hand I can think that would have the, t the deuce in it would be the two, three, four, five, but maybe not with a three, four, because you might raise the flop. So maybe like two, five, four, six, something like that. I actually fold there. Uh, he's so tight though. I didn't notice his hands is pretty tight. I mean, you can have like 10 deuce there. The bet's so small. He's getting such good odds to call. Um, but he can have any he can have 10 deuce, he can have 5 deuce really. However, to call the turn, I can't see why he'd call, be calling me with 10 2. But, uh, hmm, very interesting that I fold the river. I had no idea that I folded the river there. I think I would like to call if I did that again. But saying that, he's so tight, his river aggression is quite a lot though. Okay, anyway, I folded there. Whether it was a good fold, we'll never know. Oh. Uh, this I just I saw this hand just before I uh, replayed it. I just saw this hand. This is a really funny hand. There's quite a lot of big blinds here. Okay, we, we men open the double suited double pair. It's not that strong, but we like to play pots in position. So definitely strong enough to play against these players in position. Okay, so we flop. Basically, just a pair of eights. We've got two backdoor flush draws. We've got eight, nine. Well, well, we haven't got eight, nine, but we've got two blockers to the straight when we've got eight, nine. So I'm presuming that I'm going to be checking with all my. It's quite a dry flop as well. If he hasn't got an eight in his hand, which is unlikely, then this flop, you know, is good for us. So we bet on 480. And he calls. Okay, now the jack comes. Obviously, we've got eight, two eights for the eight, nine blocker. So I'm guessing that I am going to be bluffing here. 
and he checks and surely enough I do bluff the turn repping the 8-9 if he raises me it will be an interesting decision but I'll probably just fold as he hasn't checked raise much but he flat calls I'm pretty much just going to bet any river um, the jack comes and he checks to us would I bet this hand, would I bet the straight if I had it when the jack come? If I did have 8-9 and a jack paired, would I be betting again? Uh, I think I would. I can't see how he has a full house. Uh, if he had top set on the flop, he'd definitely be raising. I don't expect him to have many pocket sevens or pocket fives from the big blind. Um, 10 jack is like the only hand, the only way that he can really have a full house. But that's just so unlikely. So I stick to my plan and bluff the river, repping 8 9 still. If he has like a lower two pair now, he should definitely fold. Like if he had somehow had 10 7 on the flop, like I don't know, 10 7 6 something, he should fold the river obviously because now over pairs beat him, 8 9 beats him, any jack beats him. So I think it's a profitable bluff for sure. So I bet and he calls so I'm not so happy about that and <laughs> he turns over 7-5 for bottom two pair and obviously he got counterfeited on the river by the pocket jacks I got jacks and eights he's got jacks and sevens so I chuckled when I saw that hand so that was nice so now we're up to 20,000 chips chip leader again well, we probably probably were at the time, but yeah, still chip leader, so that's good. And moving on a level or two, uh, we've got a new chip leader, twenty five thousand. Uh, I'm getting pretty nice odds here. You know, I'm getting four to one with a nut suit and a rundown. I mean, well, not a rundown, but you know, four, five, seven. Connected a little bit, so easy call with those odds. Pretty amazing flop for me. Hoping I don't bet here. I certainly didn't. Checks round to this guy. C bet of 67%, so I expect him to see bet a little bit. Well, two thirds of the time. He actually checked back, so it's a bit unfortunate. Checks. <laughs> Our hand just gets stronger. We have to start getting some money in sooner or later, so. I lump in 3,000, uh, gets called, so everybody seems to have something now. Hmm, interesting. I think somebody's picked up a flush draw for sure. This guy possibly, and this guy, there's not many straight draws out there, I mean, I guess one has a flush draw and one has an ace. But they have to have something with it. It's quite a dry flop though, so. Yeah, flush draw and maybe like ace and three picture cards or just ace and kickers basically, so. Lovely. So I had thought this guy had the flush draw. So I'm presuming this guy will check, I'll bet, he'll fold and he'll call. That's what I think is going to happen. Yeah, fold. Oh, they both folded. I guess he didn't have the flush draw then. Okay, next hand. So now I'm 35,000 chips. So now we are the chip leader. Blinds are, um, well, I'll move on to the next hand. I seem to have lost some chips. I don't know how though, I don't, hmm, I don't know. Maybe it's been folding. So down, down to 20,000 again. And guy raises from the small blind and I do decide to three bet. I think that's because our stacks are so shallow. We don't have, I mean the blinds are 500 so I've only got 40 big blinds, I think. Yeah, 40 big blinds and once he, well he's only got 12,000 so he's only got 20 big blinds so that's pretty obvious three bet here as we can get half the effective stacks in almost so that's fine. And he just shoves on us so that's nice. 
And he has a legitimate hand. He was never going to fold that with 20 big blinds. So back up to 32,000 again. Okay, no, we're up to 46,000 now. Must have been picking up some pots. We've got aces. Gets min opened here. Um, I'm presuming we don't three bet as we're out of position. Uh, and I don't like to three bet in this tournament. So I just flat call, which is good. Jack, Jack, Deuce. I'm checking it to him. He's obviously C betting. Lovely turn card for us. No reason to bet here. Um, if he has a jack, he's betting. If he doesn't have a jack, he's going to bluff that card most of the time. So, check. Uh, and he bets 3200 and I would like to raise here. Because if he has nothing at all, I don't expect him to bet the river. If he has a jack, we get value by raising right here. Uh, if by somehow he has spades, and straight draw or something or even just an ace there's a small chance he might call our raise as well so I'd like to raise here and we do raise don't want to scare him off I could have bet a little bit more maybe like 8,900 mm, I don't mind that we've got him to call anyway so got some extra money there then the spade hits and we shove he's got 18,000 in you know I mean if he has a jack on the turn I expect him to probably be raising as well anyway some of the time. So that eliminates some of the possibility he has a jack. So on the river, you know, if he has a flush, he's calling any bet pretty much. So might as well shove it in. If he has an ace, he sh shouldn't really call anything on that river card. And the probability that he has a jack has been reduced a little bit. So I oh, might as well shove. Next hand, up to 52,000 here. So a chip leader, I think. Oh no, this guy's chip leader, 79,000 he has. So we're second in chips. I think this is the this is the final table now. Yeah, final table. We open the ace five seven eight, which is fine. Oh no, we don't we limp, sorry. We limp it. Mm, pretty nice flop for us. Up and down straight draw, middle pair, not flush draw. Uh, he has 50,000 chips. I could raise here, but we've got enough chips. Uh, just, I can just call in position. Um, we turn the second nuts right, 5-8. Yep, 8 tens the nuts, 5-8 is the second nuts. No reason to just call here. I think if he had 8-10 himself, he'd be betting more than 1,200. So I'd like to raise here, uh, and I do raise. That's good. And he flat calls, so it definitely doesn't have 8-10 now. He'd be shoving, so I think his most likely hand is a flush draw with a pair and a gut shot or something like that. Like maybe, uh, I don't know, 9 10. Yeah, 9 10 with clubs. 9 10 jack with clubs or something like that. You know, those kind of hands anyway. It doesn't really matter what exact hand he has, but those. That kind of range, I'm crushing. I mean, I already have the nut straight, and his club's going to be dead if it comes, and he does have the flush draw. So, nice turn card, I think, for us. And he bets half pot to now. I'm thinking he definitely has the flush. Obviously, it can't be a great flush. We have the nut flush. So, he's just blocker betting, maybe with the 10 high flush draw, 10 high, or like 10. 9-10 or jack high flush draw basically that's what I think he has most likely so I think he's probably going to be calling a raise we bet and leave some money behind we don't shove all in making it look like we still have some chips to play with if we're bluffing or something you know so wow he reshoves I didn't expect that <laughs> interesting so we call Bingo, bango, bongo. Exactly the kind of hand I thought he would have the gut shots with the flush draws. He was so dominated, even on the turn. Oh, my mouse has just died. Okay, well, on the turn, he had 
12% equity. So great spot for us there. Gets us up to 104,000 chips. Got everybody covered. This guy's got 80,000, so. And then we're four-handed. Okay, so we're on to the next hand here, and there's no small blind, I don't think. No, there's no small blind. Uh, this guy limps. And this guy raises definitely a hand that you could three bet with. But as you know, I don't like three betting out of position. We've got quite far. So flat call with a hand that does fine three ways. And we go three ways. Nice flop for us. Obviously, we can be in some dominated situations, but it's pretty rare. Even if he does have like ace king 10, but we have two pair right now, so we're doing pretty well. So I'm guessing I'm going for a check raise here. And he gets check round to the raiser who just checks back. Not a great turn card for us if he has kings or aces, but obviously we're not going to fold to one bet. So we check again. I could bet fold here. But I check, give him a chance to bluff if he doesn't have an over pair. Okay, interesting. I guess my reasoning is some of the time I can get him to fold aces or kings here some of the time. And the raise is very small anyway. So the, the pot is 11,000 and we're risking 10,800. So. It's a small raise. If he has air, he's folding. If he has aces or kings, he's folding some of the time. Uh, if he calls here, we're, we're not gonna lose any more chips at all. We're just gonna check fold the turn. So, and if he raises, obviously we're folding, so. He folds and he folds, so we pick up a nice pot there. And we chip leader still. Oh, this guy's got, oh no, he's got 10,000, that's fine, we've got a hundred and something thousand. 121,000. Oh, this guy got knocked out somehow. Uh, didn't notice that hand. Okay, it's fine. Oh. Okay, so we, oh, we decide to min-raise this hand. Interesting psychology. This guy folds, which is really funny. He's folding like four, he needs to put 1400 in. He's getting five to one and he folds. So, okay. To the flop, uh, we have an up and down with five seven, backdoor flush draw. And he donked half pot and his donk percentage is 20%, which is quite high. So I'm guessing we're flat calling here and we are. Interesting turn card. He checks. Very easy bet here in my opinion. I mean we could check back, but I think he's gonna bluff some rivers. So I think it's easier just to bet here. But we end up checking here, I don't mind that at all. And we river the second nuts, which is fine. There is quite a lot of merit to raising, but I wouldn't be surprised if I just call. Uh, I do just call. And he had two pair, so that's fine. Three-handed, okay. It's two-handed actually. I've missed the other hand. He must have knocked the other guy out. So we've got fourteen thousand, no, one hundred and forty thousand. He's got eighty-seven thousand. So almost two to one in chips. Min raise this hand, and he min four bets us. Very easy defend. Interesting flop. Quite an action flop. When he bets so small here, I think he doesn't have a nutty hand. <clears throat> if he does have a nutty hand, it's only the nut straight, really. I don't expect him to have the ace high flush here. Unless by some miracle it's ace jack of clubs, then I expect him to do this. So I wouldn't be surprised if we called. We do call. Turn giving us two pair. Still got the second nut straight. And he, he bets small again. Which is quite interesting. 
And like I said, I don't think he has enough flush draw or even ten, even jack high or nine high flush here very often. I think he would be betting more. So he decided to min raise here. I think I would have preferred a raise to about 8,000. I don't think he's going to fold any flush here. Or if he has ace jack, he probably still won't even fold that hand. So don't really like the size of my bet, but I like the idea behind it. And he flat calls and very nice river for us. And he checks and obviously we have the best hand all the time now. There is some chance that he, he could be having a set actually. That's something I didn't mention. He could have like a set of tens because that's a pretty terrible board for a set of tens. So we bet 14,000 here. If he raises us, we'd definitely be folding as he could have a set full house quite a lot. Once he flat calls then it's obvious that we've won. And he had, yeah, the five, five high flush with the ace jack. So he had a weak flush. So we got pretty lucky on the, on the river there. And this is basically the biggest hand that we lost all tournament. Uh, we open, yeah, we open the hand. He defends, obviously we flop up and down straight draw with a flush draw. We bet 3,200 and he raises here. Uh, given the given the stack sizes, I don't mind a call and then a fold actually, to be fair. I think he can have a higher flush draw. We're not going to do so well against his range. We don't have enough flush draw. Even against the queen. Uh, you know, we're not doing amazingly well. But I do decide just to get it in, which I don't think it's a terrible mistake. As we have a lot of chips, but um, I would have preferred a call and then a fold, I think. Okay, he actually ended up having a set of nines. So we lost that pot. So now he's got us in chips. He's got 130,000, we got 100,000. So he's retaken the chip lead. Min raise. Flop the wrap with 357 with a backdoor flush draw. And I decide to check back here. Mm, don't really love my check back here, I prefer a bet. The queen comes, and now it's just more awkward to us. He pots into us. I think he is very likely to pick up some some draws here with the with the queen nine. So I picture him I imagine him having the higher draws on this board, so we call and we make it's a pretty ugly card. We make a straight, however, you know, 9-10 gets there, 7-10 gets there, clubs get there. When he checks, I think we're actually winning. If he does have a speed, it's more likely to be 7-10 or even 9-10 that's scared of the flush. So we check back and he had 9-4. So we got there on the river. It's nice. Quite similar chip stacks here. Min raise the double suit queens. Nice flop for us. I presume I raise straight away here. I do. There's a lot of draws on the flop. Lovely turn card for us. And he min bets like he did last time when he had the weak hand. So I think he has a weak draw here. I don't want to raise too much. Definitely under the size of the pot. Keep him in. I like the sizing. He calls and nice river card as I think he's going to have a flush draw a lot of the time and he shoves which is nice for us so we re shove and he did have the nut flush he also had a six so that was nice so he's down to 27,000 chips we're on 200,000 min open he three bits us there's no point to just call here might as well just get it in and he ends up having Nines, so we were we were flipping. Great flop for us, and we hold up and we win the tournament for uh, about two thousand dollars. So that was nice. Okay, thanks for watching, guys.